thank you after this break, um, Scott. We we talked um, uh, about higher self in the first hour. We talk uh, very precisely about the mind of higher self and um, kind of the life of higher self in some ways. Um, I was wondering, um, does anybody, does everyone has a higher self? You know, like. Uh, even animals, plants, rocks. Who has a higher self? Does everybody has a higher self? Right. Well, you know, again, if we pull back to Ra, uh, they make a distinction between a uh, third density soul called body, mind, spirit, or body, mind, spirit complex, and a second density plant or animal being called a body, mind entity. Not even complex, but body, mind. Uh, the difference is that the human has an individuated spirit complex or energy field. Complex means basically energy field, com complicated or multi-sectional energy field. So body, mind, spirit complex is an integrated you know, whole of those three distinct energy consciousness fields of body and mind and spirit. Uh, associated with an individual higher self. It may be that many, many souls have the same higher self if those souls are lower third density development. So a soul that's 3.1, you know, or very first stage human just used to be a, a monkey or, or, or a gorilla or a, you know, a horse or something or a dog or a cat a primitive or tri prim primal mind, primitive mind person who's very body identified uh, may have an individual higher self or will, I, I, I believe would have an individual higher self but uh, there may be one higher self responsible for many many souls while an animal or a plant would have a collective higher self guide which in many ways is actually a six density ET group. I believe that the, the higher self, the non-individual higher self of plants and animals is akin to a six density extraterrestrial group that takes, that has responsibility for the evolution of those plants or animals. So the higher self of, uh, of a plant or an animal group, what's a group, right? The mammalian group, the aviary, avian group, the amphibian group, the fish group, the, you know, grasses group, the, you know, pine trees or evergreen, you know, type group, deciduous trees, oversoul, the, the oversoul of deciduous trees being different than the oversoul of evergreen trees. Maybe, maybe. But that oversoul may be a six density confederation ET group. Not certainly not, you know, one tree has its own individual higher self. But I think that many most the humans do have an individual higher self, but that higher self may be responsible for multiple body mind spirit complexes or people. Mm. And the higher self is always late six density. Yes. So, so when you when you say that uh, many people may have one higher self, um, can it be that it's because higher self is not uh, in a linear time? It's not in space time. So, because it's not in space time, he can uh, incarnate different part of himself at the same time to have more experience, and so that will mean several individuals on Earth. Yes. Uh, and not only on Earth, but also on other planets. So, within the community of one of of one's being, <laughs> the community of one's personal being, meaning all of the selves or body, mind, spirit complexes or souls that are under one on, under the same higher self, would be beings on other planets in multiple dimensions. So you can have. Um, a family member, or I don't know what it would be called, you know, the, the, <laughs> uh, a soul twin or soul braid in another dimension on another planet, in obviously another time period. 
but yes, the higher self is outside of time and space. It's it's in time space, not space time, uh, or it's in the it, it's it it's in um, it's in a condition beyond linear duality, linear space, linear time and space, and uh, it can therefore manifest itself in any time. And I imagine in any quantity. And so the higher self is learning also. That's the thing. Higher self as a bodhisattva um, in awareness of unity but not yet fusion with infinity is on its way uh, on its path. And the path is very much associated with being the teacher for those souls. But that's not the only thing the higher self does too. So that would be like his training. Well, you see, higher self is like the function of six chakra. The functions of six chakra are considered threefold. When Ra talked about energy felt at the forehead tingling, indicating stimulation of sixth ray, there were three functions. One was coordination of sixth ray with the lower chakras. The other was the development of sixth chakra itself fully. And the third was its coordination with seventh chakra or gateway to intelligent infinity. So, Sixth chakra is it's also a midway station, midway point between the lower realms, which are basically third, fourth, fifth dimensional, body, mind, spirit complex is on the path of evolution, and its experience of unity, which is sixth density per se, and then its relationship to its, high, its own higher self or greater being, which is uh, seventh density, the body, mind, spirit complex totality, or its its own infinitude. It's it's in unity yet not yet in infinity. And the seventh density self, which is pretty much the same as a Buddha or a Logos, almost there, is the higher aspect of higher self. So higher self uh, has a path ahead of it that really cannot be described by us. Uh, so its training is threefold too. Coordination with itself, its lower, it, its emanations, the emanations of higher self as body, mind, spirit complex in third and fourth and fifth dimension uh, over time. Multiple beings those are. So higher self coordinates with that, with those beings, its emanations. It also uh, explores the nature of consciousness itself in its own level of unity. It also coordinates with its future self or its own higher being, which is the seventh density entity, which is in the flow of infinity from the Logos. So that's the training of higher self, is uh, coordination as a bodhisattva with um, its emanation bodies, playing my sphere complexes of third, fourth, fifth dimensional dimensions, densities, and then its exploration of the nature of unity and consciousness itself, and then its coordination with its future being or its future development, which is ultimately um, eighth dimensional or exploring intelligent infinity to whatever extent it can, to uh, to move into becoming a Buddha or or a true avatar or the logoic logoic infinite awareness intelligent infinity. So those are the three works of higher self in general. And that's akin to the functions of the six ray. Hmm. That's a lot of work that higher self is doing at the same time. He's a busy guy. Oh yeah, very busy guy. I, I was speaking about Ra when we talk about their work with uh, the Egyptian. Oh. And you know, because the view of higher self is someone that is wiser than us and so will not make a mistake right and um, but Ra states well I don't have the right quote but mm. was Ra states something like they offer some help to the Egyptian but their help was distorted after that mm. so that means that they um, they their offering of help um, was wasn't as wise as they hoped it would be. Well, so, the consequences uh, yeah. were certainly not intended. So yeah, when so that they would I would link that to what you said about um, higher self being naive sometimes. 
Right. Well, you see, again, if we think about those three spheres of activity of Atman, Atman being higher self, uh, one being coordination with evolving body-mind spirit complexes in third and fourth and sixth density, early six, and then its exploration of consciousness itself and unity, and then its work with the higher, its higher uh, teacher. Uh, just because the higher self knows unity doesn't mean it knows how to apply wisdom in distorted third density social complexes. <laughs> and that's the point. Is um, First of all, you see that different teachers teach differently, right? Nityananda and Gautama teach differently. Yeah. Ra teaches differently than, than Gautama or Nityananda too. Ra is not a Buddha, Ra is not finished, but uh, teachers uh, teach differently. Now, what's interesting is that a person can be in the level of higher self or can be free of, uh, can be perfected in love and wisdom, but still uh, have blind spots in terms of understanding distortion. Distortion, you know, you, you to understand uh, distortion, the mind has to have some familiarity with uh, how how understand how, how information gets tangled, so or that, how how confu you know the genesis of confusion. So that means exploring negativity in some way or some distortion. Well, that's yes, and actually, Ra said that they were naive in helping the Egyptians. Uh, and that they, having had a very harmonious third density cycle on Venus, uh, were less familiar with negativity than uh, was <laughs> appropriate or helpful uh, to avoid making mistakes. Now, Ra wouldn't call it a mistake, but they, are, uh, they do have karmic responsibility for the unintended consequences that they set into motion by their naive attempts to help. Yeah, like which, is, which is basically, you know, <laughs> the root of the Illuminati and all negative uh, Babylonian, Egyptian perversions of mystery, of original mystery school teaching. Crystals and pyramids and energy and this kind of thing. Uh, Ra has a primary responsibility to keep uh, working with to correct those distortions, it, it's just a strange, it is a strange thing to me that uh, a pure mind is not an infinite mind. That's the point. And that just shows you, you know, you see, would a Buddha have made a mistake? Maybe not. Would, would there be unintended consequences from the actions of Nityananda or the Buddha or Gautama? Probably not. But that's the difference between a Bodhisattva and a Buddha. But um, to my knowledge, uh, Gautama Buddha didn't get very involved with people, right? No, no. He had students. There were lots of students, and he was their kings, and there were also merchants, and people tried to kill him, and there were negative actions happening around him. Mm. But I think that uh, a sixth density confederation group like Ra uh, is not a Buddha, is not at the level of infinite, intelligent infinity is not in intelligent infinity. Therefore, there is limitation of its awareness and consciousness or capacity. The limitation is born of its uh, experiential continuum or its history uh, and specifically their consciousness condition in third density if they're going to be working with 3D group. You see, in fourth density, uh, sixth density to fourth density positive confederation raw to the Pleiadians, let's say. There are no problems, right? <laughs> Everything's worked out very quickly if there's some confusion. And, and distortion doesn't, doesn't really play a big role. There's not going to be much distortion coming from six density positive intervention to a 4D positive group. But there could be a whole lot of distortion that comes as the result of six density, late six density group working in third density. Uh, because uh, purity is not um, uh, 
perfected wisdom. It, it, there's still distortion. That's the point. That's why they're not. That's why they're still in the octave. When they're perfected of the octave, then they're free and they go to eighth density. So that's what left ahead. Uh, but it's interesting, yeah. So it just shows you that it's what we call a master or a guru, not a Buddha, but a master or guru who understands unity and freedom from self-orientation and um, a great development of love wisdom still has blind spots. I, I do remember something like Ra saying that this help to the Egyptian was a project that he has to bring to the Confederation. So it was um, an agreement with the Confederation to help. No, it was, a con it was the Council. Council? Brought to the Council of Saturn for uh, review. So the Council accepted that project and right. accepted okay. also right. uh, Ra's group help Proposal. after when they had to deal with uh, the consequence of it. Right. Yes. So, so that's true. And the question is. Well, the question is. How could they so, do that? Yeah. How could we do that? Right. Uh, does that mean that they have some problem you know, with they, that? They have a higher view or some. Yes, view? they have a higher view. The unintended what 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 issued from Ra's intervention at Ra's perspective, Ra, or late sixth density awareness, is called unintended consequences. From the perspective of eighth density, you see the Council of Saturn is six, seven, eight. The Confederation is four, five, six. Mainly, mainly. Right? There's the higher Confederation, which is the greater beings of sixth density that interface with the Council of Saturn, which is six, seven, eight. Uh, there are, and there are lower levels of the Council of Saturn that are below six also, six density. But the Council of Saturn um, doesn't make mistakes. And what, what were unintended consequences as a function of Ra's naivete was fully known by the Council before they approved the plan, meaning approved Ra's um, landing or intervention with Akhenaten and technology transfers and building of the pyramid and all of that. Uh, from the perspective of the Council of Saturn, like the perspective of the Logos, um, catalyst that uh, leads to significant polarization, positive and negative, is a good thing. The unintended consequences of Ra's intervention with Akhenaten, and like maybe even the Egyptians with the Atlanteans, even before that, which the Akhenaten contact built upon, what they called unintended consequences were basically um, increase in distortion and negativity. Distortion meaning confusion. Negativity meaning that the Illuminati base their whole magical system ultimately on what Ra gave to the Egyptians in the mystery schools 3,500, 4,000 years ago. So there was a very significant increase in distortion and negative polarization. From the level of the council, 6th, 7th, 8th density, that increase of negative polarization is still a benefit to the Logos. It, uh, and uh, the increased negativity serves as good catalyst for the unpolarized, meaning it oppresses them more. Further development of negative polarization in 3D souls, or the Illuminati activity like we see today, painful and ugly and sick as it is, yet offers um, powerful catalyst to the sleepers. When you mean powerful catalyst, it, it's like helping to see both sides more clearly? More no, it clearly. helps. It helps. You know, it's a matter of power. Mm -hmm. High positive polarity, high negative polarity, or um, clearly polarized activity, positive and negative, uh, represents a manifestation of greater universal power than non-polarization, than confusion. So. The negative path um, is using, you know, the power of the law of one, the power of, of creation. Positive path also uses the power of, of the one, or, or love light power, 
with love. One's without love, one's with love. Uh, activity generated by a polarized consciousness, meaning an efficient use of catalyst on the positive and the negative path, um, represents um, a greater focusing of universal power in that catalyst, or, or as a form of catalyst, or produces catalyst that is a manifestation of a greater focusing of universal power or coordination of energy. That energy coordination or uh, focusing of power, positive and negative, or done by positive and negative entities, activities on their path, um, is, a more, is a more dynamic catalyst for those who are sleeping. And for each of the people, each path, for those on both paths. But particularly here, uh, the the greater negativity that came from what Ra considered naive intervention, those unintended consequences, uh, from the perspective of the logos that really just wants polarization and orientation and and the development of consciousness, uh, is seen as a as a gain, not a loss, not a mistake. So that's the difference between sixth density and eighth density awareness. Yeah, so, so Vos of Ra um, helped this planet to be more, to, to increase the polarity and probably yes. the harvest. Yes, somewhat, yes. Somewhat. Yeah, somewhat, sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I so mean, the more, po the more polarized, the more catalyst that comes from clearly polarized activity or polarized consciousness, positive and negative, as forms of catalyst, the greater the uh, harvestability of, of people in general, of humanity in general, more people will make the grade. Mm, yeah, I, use, I, I heard you saying sometimes, yeah, like, like I used <laughs> lately, um, the expression vos of uh, uh, it means that higher self, is that one being, one entity, or is it a group of entity, or that depends on... It's a unified group. A unified group is uh, a multiple unity. A uh, unity, you know, you see, I mean, ultimately all unity can be understood as a integration of multiplicity. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, is it an ocean or is it a collection of waves? Well, the ocean is a collection of waves. Is it a tapestry or is it a, a thousand threads? Well, the tapestry is a thousand threads. There's no tapestry other than the threads. There's no ocean other than the waves. There's no unity that isn't the result of what can be seen as a multiplicity. That was deep. Uh, stop okay. you for a second there, huh? Yes, I have to stop and... Uh, I'm probably going to have to release into that to understand that. I have to cough and spit mm. a little bit. Okay, my thought <coughs> was that um, higher self, um, young, young higher self, if I can say that. Young? Young, young. Carl Jung? No, young like uh, Y-O-U-N-G. Like young man. Young man. Like, young man. Like a young uh, higher uh, self uh, uh, that just became a higher self after a fifth density. Yes. Um, I was seeing it like one being, and then getting into fusion with more being until it, it gets closer to seven density. I think that's, that's okay. Yeah, I mean, you know, the sun is composed of multiple, you know, patches of love light, of dynamic love light. So yeah, those of Ra basically is an integration of you know, it's a social memory complex at six dimensional level, right? So we have social memory complexes normally in fourth and fifth and sixth density. Uh, the many becomes a one group mind, full telepathy or full fusion, consciousness fusion, collective group mind. Uh, that is even more so uh, developed in sixth density, where not only uh, is what's known to each available to all but 
each knows itself as all. So the understanding of each that it is all is shared by each and all. So it's a it's a grand, you know, multiplication or uh, intensification of the experience of oneness. But the formation of that would be multiple entities, body, mind, spirit complexes, that got themselves into sixth density as a group, ultimately harvesting um, as a group process from fourth to fifth to sixth density over a long time period of time. So yes, there are many beings there, yet the awareness of each one is some uh, it is some taste of unity, all is one, one is all, uh, but each is not yet perfected, so there are distortions in the mind of a higher self. This is an interesting point. The higher self still has distortion based on its history, uh, and that's why Ra could be called naive, or they made their intervention, they called themselves naive, uh, because they're not yet perfected. So there can be an ex that's the same kind of thing, like the requirements for harvest, right? The requirements for third to fourth density positive harvest being 51% service to other shows that there's 49% service to self. That's interesting. Or there's 49% distortion. Yeah. How about that? 49% distortion is not little, you know. So 49% and there would be some souls that get into 4D positive with 49% distortion. Even though they have 51% service to other, which really means fourth ray activation. Green ray activation. Love, the quality of unconditional love, green ray, is service to other. So they have, of their total chakra development, 49% blockage in the lower two, second and third ray, or first, second, third ray. That's a significant amount of blockage, you know. So some entities got into fourth density positive with 49% blockage. That's interesting, right? Those are the junior members of the fourth density group. And then you can imagine that there are some sixth density groups that when they made the harvest from third to fourth had many levels of distortion. <coughs> Meaning, um, a significant number of the group souls that graduated from their third density to their fourth density positive cycle had significant distortion. So what do you think that looks like when they're all in sixth density? It looks like they, there's some things they didn't get, there's some things they missed. And that's the point. Ross said that one of the, <clears throat> one of the more subtle purposes of wanderers incarnating on Earth is to address um, lessons unlearned from the specific dynamics of their third density cycle long, long ago. And so Ra uh, was in a condition of great harmony and love and joy and happiness in their third density Venusian cycle. Uh, what better place to come than uh, 3D Earth, uh, the home of uh, the sector, you know, slackers of the sector, galactic sector slackers, the learning impaired 3D repeaters and uh, Orion doing their best to keep learning, you know, how to develop the power of falsity. Yeah, appreciate negativity. Right, this is a great place, a great place for the development of the appreciation of negativity and the appreciation of, appreciation of distortion. So all is one includes there is no distortion, there is no polarity there is no negativity or positivity. There is no distortion means, uh, you know, complete and whole and perfect means there's no distortion. All is one means there's no polarity. So we can say uh, all is one, but to the extent that they don't understand negativity, they're not really bringing, they don't really um, have the adequate wisdom to a full comprehension that there's no distortion or no negativity, no polarity, right? So to the extent that, that Ra, based on the particulars of its very harmonious third density cycle experience on Venus, uh, with, added, with, with a lack of experience of distortion and negativity, 
therefore um, has a very important opportunity or a great chance to really know uh, transpolarity or freedom from polarity or all is one, there is no polarity by contact with the negativity of Orion that is lodged so well in the consciousness, the collective consciousness of this group of 3D repeaters on planet Earth. So to, to get beyond, uh, to, to realize that, you know, to realize in a very profound, deep, in, deep and detailed way, all is one, um, all is complete and whole and perfect, there would have to be a um, greater development of love and wisdom applied to distortion and negative polarization. And that's why Ra's here, or we are here. Yes, I, I, was, I was thinking about that because um, I remember in your first book, uh, and I think the second one also, you were talking about wanderers and that one of the reason that wanderers were here was also to help their group to understand some principles. Right. It's a recapitulation of lessons not fully learned during that group's third density cycle uh, long, long ago. And so again, uh, Ra and our group didn't have much distortion or didn't have much presence of negativity on Venus in third density. And so there's a basic naivete, not understanding negativity, negative polarity. But you can't really know that there's no polarity or, or all is one, all is complete and whole and perfect. There's no polarity without um, developing greater love and wisdom about polarity. Yeah. Same thing with distortion. We, we can't appreciate the, the, the wholeness of the coin if we look only at one face. Yeah, one yeah. Side. You can't say that you really know that the two sides, the two faces of the coin are one coin until you know those faces in great detail. And the knowing requires love wisdom. It requires uh, the capacity to accept unconditionally the totality of each face and the capacity to understand the detail and the, the, um, all, all, the, all the dynamics ultimately of each face of that coin. And so that is not really doable uh, in the same way in a position of remaining at sixth density. But it's uh, being down here on the ground with incarnation yet under the veil, yet with millions. I mean, there are probably are millions of souls on Earth from Ra's crew, right? Now that's strange, right? So there are seven billion souls on Earth Ra said there were maybe 65 million wanderers. Maybe today that's 100 million wanderers. Most of them are six density wanderers. So let's say what? 60 million, 60 wanderers? I don't know. Maybe 50 million? Could be 80 million. But tens of millions of wanderers, six density wanderers on Earth. Compared to the whole population, it's only 2%, 1%. But 80 million. 60 million six density wanderers is a lot of wanderers, right? Each one of them gets a little, little piece of the puzzle or, or has a little taste of um, the catalyst of negativity, negative polarization, and human confusion, distortion, stuck consciousness, you know, uh, polarity confusion, confusion regarding, you know, disorientation. Uh, confused orientation and negative polarity. Each wanderer here gets a little taste by their own life experience and the catalyst that comes to each of us uh, of uh, various aspects of negative polarization and distortion, blockage, confusion and disorientation, non-orientation. That is all um, integrated or, or blended and unified in the collective mind of that of our group, of each six density group, <laughs> really of any social memory complex group. So, do you think in some ways to refine the offering of help of of higher self, and at the same time to understand why the creator 
how can the creator get mm, distorted in some way? How sure. the roots of the of the pain and suffering in some ways? Yeah, well, there's a lot of learning. So there's a learning first of all that the creator, you know, that is infinite love light and infinite love will can appear in such a distorted form, either so upside down, evil, negatively polarized, or so stuck and so confused and repeating and uh, self-rejecting. Uh, to see the Creator, to see you know the infinite Creator in a very confused human, or in a very evil human, is a great thing. As that is confronted and understood more fully, the roots of how those souls got to be that way is also understood. And the means by which service to them can be offered is also understood. Do you think it can be also to help higher self move to the next uh, step, to the self density? I was thinking about of course. something that you say about the 6.2. Um, uh -huh. That, well, yeah, you said something about 6.2 being of help to bring down higher self to 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 help us. Mm -hmm. You know, I was well. Can can you can you tell us what is six point two and two points two point six when you speak about it okay. in your lecture, please? Okay. Well, this is you know the the second of the three chakra bands. So chakra bands. Is, an, is a concept of the relationship between um, the chakras, particular chakras seen as a sphere rather than a column, a three-dimensional, multi-dimensional sphere. Um, and so the first, like a, like a circle, a ball, a sphere. The, first, the outer is seventh chakra, first chakra. Another band within there is sixth chakra, second chakra. Band closer to the core of the sphere is fifth chakra, third chakra, and the center is fourth ray, fourth chakra, the core of that sphere. So the middle band, sec sixth ray, second ray, is what we're talking about. Yes. Sixth ray corresponds to higher self, awareness of unity. Second ray corresponds to uh, the body, mind, spirit, or personal sense of self, personal sense of identity associated with body and um, personality, uh, the, the identification uh, of a self born of experience of physical and mental, mental process. So, so the common sense of self, or our sense of self, is ultimately going to come through uh, the conditions of second chakra. So a person with very significant blockage in second chakra will have a very distorted sense of self. Those who are, pol those who are polarized negatively and those who are chronic repeaters, which is the majority of humans, have a very distorted sense of self and have a very blocked second chakra. Uh, in the same way that animals, second density beings, um, individuate a sense of self based on love investment from the human, meaning a pet owner loves his dog or cat. That dog or cat develops a sense of self associated with reception of love or living, you know, experiencing life within the field of the unconditional love of the human who loves their pet. That animal develops a spirit complex or moves to graduate into third density and becomes a human. That process by which love investment allows formation of a healthy sense of self, metaphysically allowing the transit from second density to third, is comparable to how a parent loves or doesn't love their child, and the child grows up with either a healthy or distorted sense of self, thus corresponding a second chakra that's either pretty clear or pretty blocked. Pretty distorted sense of self or a pretty clear sense of self as the result of the investment of love and unconditional care by the parents to the child, who in the early years of their life is developing for a second and then third chakra. So, the humans on Earth <coughs> who are negatively oriented, Illuminati types and power grandizers, 
And then the majority humans who are um, non-polarized, not clear about positive or negative, and repeat chronically, the negatives will repeat also because they're not negatively polarized enough. Almost none of the humans who are negative, negatively oriented will harvest. Almost all of them will repeat 3D. So they're just another subset. That's just a subset of the human repeaters, is the negatively oriented repeaters. And they have a much longer path because very few of them will ever harvest 4D negative. Almost all of them will have to turn and, and become positively polarized. Like even Crowley, right? Crowley is a, Ross is a positive soul. Meanwhile, he, he, sure, he screwed himself badly by his negativity in this lifetime. So within the body of the, let's say, what, 90%? 80% of Earth humans, the 5 or 6 billion humans on planet Earth, who are basically functionally third density repeaters. Within that you have the subset of the negatively oriented 3D repeaters. Both of them, the, 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 the group as a whole and the negative entity, negatively oriented souls who are repeaters as a subgroup, all of them have very significant second chakra blockage. The negatives are not attempting to unblock the second chakra. They're building upon second, third, fourth chakra blockages to develop negative use of wisdom and power. They don't want a clear second ray. The people who are blocked and don't harvest, but they're not negative, also don't really want a clear second ray, but they're not building upon it as a basis for gaining power or control. So you've got this mass, 90, 80 per 90% of the human population, that is significantly blocked in second and third ray. Uh, in some level, all of them don't want to clear it, or they're unable to clear it. All of them have a damaged sense of self. As I said many times before, um, the primary wound of Earth humanity is low self value, which is chronic and significant second chakra blockage. Now, that's the creator too. The basis of third density non-harvesting or third density repeating um, is ultimately second ray blockage. The ultimate cure of that is, is integration with sixth ray. And so that's the importance of, this, of the sixth six chakra, second chakra uh, band, the two six, six two band, chakra band. Uh, like I said before, you know, the salvation of second ray is its integration or bringing down of sixth ray. Now, it doesn't mean that sixth ray activation itself clears second ray. Ron talked about that. There are some uh, very spiritually minded people with very damaged sense of self also. There are wanderers who are very spiritually developed in sixth ray with a very damaged sense of self too. Meaning, they have complexes, they're neurotic, they have strong opinions that are all, you know, ego-related or self-referential. Me, me, me. I think this and I don't think that. You know, and they're prickly and they're, you know, judgmental or they have this deep sorrow or they have this deep self-doubt or self-pity. All of this is second-ray blockage. Still, they may have six and sixth-ray development. Uh, but uh, with, with the... Um, greater development of sixth ray, if the person intends to deeply self-heal, you say, you have to intend, I want deep self-healing, then uh, there's some blend of the awareness of self as complete and whole and perfect, that I am as I am, and um, I may know peace, I may understand peace, peace is my nature, quiet, peace and quiet, Right? Non-conflict. Uh, those qualities can come through heart from sixth ray to second ray. Or the damaged sense of self, which is the primary quality of earth humanity, neurosis, blockage, I think, second ray, self-rejection, self... -rejection, self um, lack of self-trust, lack of self-valuing, 
can be healed um, as there's greater contact with higher self. You see, the point though is, you know, it's wrong for me to imagine or for us to say that um, sixth ray heals second ray because really it's fourth ray that heals second ray, meaning self love heals self hate, self love, self appreciation, self care, unconditional acceptance willingness to be honest with our process and take good care of ourselves, that's what heals damaged sense of self. That's fourth ray, not sixth ray. Um, but ultimately, the real greater freedom in second ray um, is to know the self as perfect. First you know the self as goodly, or good enough, or I care, or worthy of love, worthy of care, then you know the self as unlimited, or one with all, and then there's really no self. Then you're moving towards no self, or freedom from self-referentiality in the first place. That's the real clearance of two. The real final clearance of two is when uh, there's no checking. There's no need to keep self-referencing. There's no self-cherishing. There's no self-referencing. Me, 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 what do I think, what do I feel, how am I doing, blah, blah, blah. You, you know, you're living, um, everything is your mirror. Everywhere you look, you see the one self. And there isn't, there, there's the, uh, there's a lack, there's a profound lack of self-conflict. The result of, of deep self-acceptance or deep acceptance is ultimately a profound lack of freedom from self-conflict. And that ultimately is um, uh, a, a fuller, uh, energy circulation from sixth ray to second ray and back. So, could we say that with self referentiality, six point two is is the point that higher self is working on for to move to seven? Well, that's I, don't, I mean that's not the only thing. Uh, I mean, like. The last one of the last point that higher self is working on, like like when you say that higher self has still the belief of unity as yeah, a self, as a self. So yeah, the, the the higher self in many ways takes its experience of unity as self, and self and other self seen as the one self or unity as my being has to be abandoned also. So you can say that, uh, as you're saying or implying, yeah, the final work of higher self is to realize that notion of separate self or unified self are both concepts and both illusions. You know, that, that it's basically freedom from consciousness, you know, uh, duality and unity are representations of polarized consciousness, or consciousness that's not yet unified in, or not yet freed of duality. So that's why Buddhism, Gautama, didn't talk about unity. There was distort. There was basically <laughs> uh, suffering and ignorance, or freedom from suffering and freedom from ignorance. And that's it. And there wasn't a discussion of dualistic consciousness and unity consciousness. That's in Hinduism. And in, in some ways, the critique of Buddhism versus Hinduism is that Hinduism, for many, for some, for at least text, textually, textually, in some ways, doesn't get beyond unity. Now, of course, a true avatar, Nityananda, guys like that, they're free of unity. They're free of any self-identifying. But uh, body, mind, spirit complex, or we, have a sense of separate self. Higher self, which is very second chakra related. A higher self, Atman, has a sense of the unified self. Atman believes in a unified self. The human personality believes in a separate self. Both are delusional. Both are, again, reflective self-identification or self-reflective identification. Both of those represent freedom from attachment to consciousness. When, when there's freedom from attachment to consciousness, then, then the beingness empties into unlimited awareness. And that's the, the transit to seventh density and out. 
then there's no backwards, forwards, or any movement. There's no, there's no higher or lower. So in many ways, um, the salvation of second chakra is sixth chakra, but the salvation of sixth chakra, second chakra is first, seventh, which is basically um, love, light, and infinite intelligence or intelligent infinity. So first ray is the access point to love, light, light, love. Seventh ray, in many ways, is intelligent infinity. That band of full full transformation or full development of that first ray, seventh ray band is the salvation of the sixth ray, second ray band, which is the final attachment of higher self to a unified sense of self. Its experience, its perception, it, it perceives the unity of consciousness or infinity of consciousness, but takes that as a self. That is ultimately um, an establishment of separation. So unity is a subtle form of separation. The attachment to the belief in unity or the perception of unity is actually a, a very subtle form of dualistic attachment. So that the duality or the, the, the polarity, the, 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 the concepts of duality versus unity, separate self versus the unified self, that whole interplay, that juxtaposition of first a separate sense of self and then a, a unified sense of self is itself an expression of non-enlightenment or belief in ignorance or, or ignorance and attachment. It's an attachment to basically some kind of reflective self-identification and it's and it, the salvation of so the salvation of second ray ultimately is sixth ray but the salvation of the unified second ray sixth ray band is first ray seventh ray band which is absolutely non-self reflecting which is infinity intelligent infinity as boundless love light boundless love light is intelligent infinity and then the, then the being zaps out of the octave and becomes a logos. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. You're very welcome. Much. Yeah. Thank um, you for good I, I, direction. I would have another question, uh, a last question. Um, a question that would rela relate about faith. Um, I was speaking, you know, um, how people. Uh, can help higher self to shine more uh, within themselves. I was, you know, I heard you saying that higher self was a being of unity and faith and will. Mm -hmm. And second chakra is more about sorrow and doubts, from to my knowledge. Blockage so, of second chakra. Yes. So, so is it that? Can it be that working on uh, on on the aspect of sorrow and doubts? Uh, helps to 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 not open, but help uh, to get more in contact with our higher self. You know, like sorrow is. I see it like an opposite of faith, because sorrow we are we are in pain, mm -hmm. and because we we are in doubt and we don't we we are in doubt of the future. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, any, any second or third chakra blockage that gets cleared, any clearance of second, third chakra blockage itself allows more access to higher self, right? Any degree to which the channel, first ray to seventh ray, the tube, the sushumna, is cleared, um, allows energy to contact the upper, upper chakras better which includes sixth ray and higher self. Uh, uh, personally, I understand that blockage of second ray is, is very much akin to sorrow, because it's water, element of water, and sorrow is tears and wetness, while fire is more a quality, I think, of anger, third chakra. Uh, yeah, I think that that's a very profound idea that, that sorrow is in some ways a lack of faith. Faith is ultimately resolved by knowing. So faith is a funny word 
because it sort of implies ignorance. I have faith in something, but I don't really know it. When you know it, you don't need faith. You know, do I have faith in the Buddha? No, I have no faith in the Buddha because I know the Buddha and I and I know the Buddha spoke truth. <laughs> so I don't need faith. I don't need to hope. So like they asked Carl Jung, do you believe in God? He said no. And the, the reporter was shocked and, he, and Jung said, I don't believe in God, I know God. So knowing replaces faith and belief. Uh, trust and faith come naturally by knowing higher knowing in this case. So when you know your, your greater self or your greater being um, as a being of unity or all is one, then you can have greater self-faith or self-trust. Now, <clears throat> sorrow is basically uh, an experience of um, uh, discouragement at loss or, or on you know, a disharmonious circumstance, on experience of what we don't prefer, what we don't like, don't want. You know, anger, there, there's the three poisons in Buddhism, which is grasping, aversion, and ignorance. In many ways, sorrow corresponds to grasping or desire, while anger and aversion, of course, are the same. So, if you've got, you know, there's, there's desire or grasping, which is, I want to get it, I want to keep it, I want to hold it. Sorrow is in many ways the response to not getting, not having, not keeping. So sorrow in many ways represents the attachment to grasping, while anger is the attachment to aversion. I don't want it, get it away, keep it away. Get it away, keep it away, I don't want it. That's aversion, that's anger. More third chakra fire. While uh, grasping, I associate, or desire, I associate, uh, which is, you know, I want it, I want to keep it, I don't want to lose it, that leads to sorrow. Because inevitably we don't have what we want, some things, and we lose whatever we have, or things change, right? I want to get it, I want to keep it, I don't want to lose it. Um, is in many ways the basis of sorrow. Why do we have sorrow? Um, I drop my favorite cup. Um, my desire to keep and hold it is is crushed. Uh, somebody called me a bad name. My desire for feeling good about myself is broken. Or my desire to have everybody like me is broken. Uh, I don't look pretty, I look ugly today, I have a bad hair day, I feel sad. <laughs> uh, this is, you know, the inability to keep a certain self-image associated with your hairdo, whatever. Uh, my husband died, my wife died, my child died, my dog died, you know, the world is coming to an end, or the Bob Marley was killed by the Illuminati, right? JFK, Robert... Kennedy, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, on and on and on, killed by the evil humans on earth. Naturally, we feel sorrow. That sorrow <clears throat> is the result of the desire to keep the harmonious conditions of those beautiful souls still living on earth. Right? Now, it's totally natural to feel sadness then at their death. If we had more faith or trust, would we not feel sorrow? Well, I don't think a Buddha feels sorrow or Gautama feels sorrow. I would imagine that they know those souls better than we know them. I imagine that Gautama and Nityananda knows the essence of those souls and Ra too, better than we do. And I imagine that, that again, you know, Nityananda and Gautama are at a higher level than Ra. Ra may feel sorrow. And Ra talked about the joys and sorrows of incarnation. Nityananda doesn't. <laughs> the Buddha, Gautama, they don't talk that way. They're finished with all of that qualification. But from their perspective, they don't need faith or trust to not feel sorrow. 
they're also not trying to not feel sorrow. They're not trying to get rid of their sorrow. They just don't feel it. It just doesn't arise. In the, in the condition of their awareness, or with their awareness, sorrow doesn't arise at the loss of those people, those beautiful souls who were killed. Why? <clears throat> because uh, the, in their expanse of awareness, uh, there isn't experience the loss. They don't experience the loss that we experience even when those people are killed. How? Because their awareness is not limited to third dimension. And they see the karma of those souls. And they see the metaphysical consequences of their death, which may be very positive in that many people open their heart more or more people are committed to truth and justice and goodness after watching those martyrs, after them being martyred. Lady Diana too, right? So the martyr death of all those people, which is very sorrowful to us um, because it feels like a great loss, and it is, wouldn't be experienced as a loss or lead to sorrow for those whose awareness is unlimited. Because they, first of all, they see them appearing on the astral plane. They see them going back to higher self in sixth density. They don't see anybody dying. They only see a body falling away. So if you don't see the person dying, and all you see is the, the physical body going back to the dirt, and the soul consciousness going into the astral plane with an astral body, and then leaving that and going to the etheric body, nobody's dying. Yes, sure. Nobody was lost. And then they also see the metaphysical consequences, which may be quite positive. And then they also see the karma, which was that these souls chose to come in to be killed. They chose to come in to be killed. They chose to come in to die by the negativity, the Illuminati. They chose to be born to be killed for the metaphysical power that many people would gain by witnessing in terms of opening their heart and making a commitment to truth and justice and peace and love and freedom. And so the Buddha doesn't cry. Nityananda doesn't cry. That isn't sorrow. Now that's beyond the freedom from second chakra blockage, although it is a freedom from second chakra blockage. There's no faith needed. There's no trust needed. They don't trust anything. They don't faith anything. They see. They know. They don't have to believe. They don't have to try to get rid of their sorrow. It doesn't arise in, in the condition of their unlimited uh, awareness or greater logoic or octave awareness. So that's a few steps beyond Ra, and that's a few steps beyond us. Uh, so mm, from the perspective of higher self that sees unity, taking a step back down a little, uh, Seeing unity equals knowing unity. Knowing unity depends on how deep you know that unity, how you really, how fully you really know it. Profound knowing of unity uh, leads to less attachment in general, and less grasping and aversion in general, and therefore less sorrow uh, at the loss or change uh, in general. Uh, and I know that from my own life, and people coming and going. Uh, you know, when you when you see when you see the path ahead of you, naturally you're humble. You see the greater beings beyond you. That's what we talked about humility before. Yes. You know, humility is a natural product of of greater seeing. Likewise, um, a natural freedom from sorrow and anger is the result of um, a multi-dimensional greater seeing of, of the dynamics of the change, changing phenomena. So, uh, there you go. Thank you. Thank you very much for... Thank you very much. Aww. That was great. Thank you too. <laughs>